In this lecture, we will be discussing the continuation of the previous lecture where we were solving a problem. And this was a problem that was to find the average waiting time and average turnaround time for this set of processes P1 to P5 when they follow round robin scheduling with time quantum equal to two units. So the arrival times and burst times are given here. So in the first part that was in the previous lecture, we have formed the GAN chart for this set of processes. So we have seen clearly and in detail how we should form the GAN chart. So using that GAN chart, now we will be calculating the average waiting time and the average turnaround time for this set of processes. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So this was the GAN chart that we have formed in our previous lecture. So we saw that the processes were preempted after completion of the two units of time, which was the time quantum. And then it was given to the next process. And if the process that was currently executing did not complete its execution, it was kept at the end of the ready queue and was given the chance again when its turn arrived. So this process was continued. And using that, we have formed this GAN chart where the process P1 started its execution at time zero. And then the last process to execute was P5, which completed its execution at 14 units of time. All right, so with this GAN chart, now we will be calculating first the turnaround time and then the waiting time for all these processes one by one and then we will calculate the average turnaround and the average waiting times. So let's see how we can do that. So here are the formulas that we have already discussed before and using these formulas we'll be calculating. So the turnaround time is calculated like this. It is the completion time minus the arrival time. So the completion time can be found from the GAN chart. We just have to see the last occurrence of each processes and then that will give us a completion time. For example, for P1, let's see where did P1 occur the last. So P1 occurred here, here and also here. So this is the last occurrence of P1. And when did it complete? 13. So 13 is a completion time. So that is how you find the completion time from the GAN chart. And then we need the arrival time. So for arrival time, we need our table. So here I will paste our table so that from here we can find out the arrival times for each of these processes. Then the waiting time is calculated like this. The turnaround time, the turnaround time which we just calculated using this formula minus the burst time which can be found from this table. So using this, let's calculate all these things for this set of processes. So here I formed the table in which we will be filling up these values. So we have processes with process IDs P1 to P5 and the completion times, as I already told you, we can fill up using this GAN chart. So for P1, I already explained it is 13. So for P2, what is it? Let's see the last occurrence of P2. Where did P2 occur the last? Here. So what is the completion time? It is 12. So 12 is the completion time of P2. And for P3, where is the last occurrence? P3 occurred first and last just here. So the completion time of P3 is 5 units. And for P4, what is the completion time? Where is the last occurrence of P4? It is here. This is the first and last occurrence of P4 as well. And the completion time is 9 units. Now for the last one, P5, what is the completion time? We see that P5 occurred here and also here. So this is the last occurrence of P5. And the completion time of P5 is 14 units of time. So this is the completion time of P5. So using this completion times, let's calculate the turnaround time. So turnaround time is the completion time minus the arrival time, which we'll see from this table. So for process P1, the completion time is 13 minus the arrival time that is zero. So the turnaround time is 13 minus zero, that is 13 units. And similarly for P2, what is the turnaround time? Completion time 12 minus the arrival time that is one. So that gives us 12 minus one, that is 11. And for P3, the completion time is five and the arrival time is two. So that gives us 5 minus 2, that is 3 units. And for P4, the completion time is 9, and then the arrival time is 3. So that will give us 9 minus 3, that is 6 units of time. And for P5, the completion time is 14, and the arrival time is 4. So that will give us 14 minus 4, that is 10 units of time. So we have found the turnaround times for processes P1 to P5. Now using this turnaround time, we can now calculate the waiting time. So what is the waiting time? Turnaround time minus the burst time. Turnaround time that we found here minus the burst time given in this table. So let's see. For process P1, turnaround time is 13 minus the burst time that is 5. So that will give us 13 minus 5 that is 8 units of time. And for P2, the turnaround time is 11 minus the burst time 3. So that gives us 11 minus 3 that is 8 units of time. And for P3, the turnaround time is 3 minus the burst time that is 1. So what will that give us? 
3 minus 1, 2 units of time. So for P4, turnaround time is 6 and then the burst time is 2. So that gives us 6 minus 2, 4 units of time. And the last one, P5, the turnaround time is 10 minus the burst time that is 3. So that gives us 10 minus 3, 7 units of time. So here we have calculated the turnaround times and the waiting times for this set of processes. Now it is easy to calculate the average turnaround time and the average waiting time. So let's see how we do that. So the average turnaround time is 13 plus 11 plus 3 plus 6 plus 10 divided by the number of processes 5. That gives us 43 divided by 5 that is 8.6 units. And the average waiting time is 8 plus 8 plus 2 plus 4 plus 7 divided by the number of processes that is 5. And that gives us 29 divided by 5 which is 5.8 units. So hence we have found the average turnaround time and the average waiting time for the set of processes P1 to P5 when they follow a round robin scheduling and when the time quantum is 2 units and when the arrival times are also given for this set of processes. So it may seem a bit lengthy to you but actually I have just explained it in a very detailed way so that you may be able to understand it very clearly. So you can practice these problems more and more and it will help you to solve it quickly and you just have to keep in mind that there are different things that we need to pay attention to when we are solving these problems on round robin scheduling. So as long as you keep that in mind and if you are careful enough you will be able to solve these problems without any issues. So I hope this was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.